This video is on the capital asset pricing model. Um, for short, people refer to this as the CAPM. Um, I'm going to start by putting up the equation. This is a mathematical equation. It was first published in the 1960s, um, and the Nobel Prize in Economics was awarded in 1990 to William Sharp, Harry Markowitz, and Merton Miller jointly uh, for this work. So what is this? What is the capital asset pricing model? It's a methodology to determine a rate for risk for a future cash flow. So the CAPM is all about risk rates. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about how you should be thinking about rates uh, and risk rates. It all follows this concept called, um, that goes, the higher the risk, the higher the return. And this is a common phrase in finance, you might have heard of it. Um, but it's, a, it's really a pretty complex idea. What this stands for is the higher the risk, the higher the return. It's describing how people make financial decisions in the present moment. So in the present moment, you're looking at a whole bunch of different either investment decisions or business decisions. You're looking at all these different alternatives. And alternatives with higher levels of risk, you're going to be willing to pay less money for. And what that means is that if you take one of those high levels of risk opportunities, you're going to pay less for it today. And so in the future, if you realize those cash flows from that opportunity, you're going to be getting a higher level of reward because you discounted them when you initially entered into that opportunity. So the higher level of risk, the higher the reward. Um, the, and the opposite is true. For, uh, for opportunities that are lower level of risk, you're going to be getting lower levels of reward. Now, the confusing thing about this idea is that it's not a guarantee of future returns. Um, this is where a lot of people sometimes go wrong. You can't say that well, the higher the risk, the higher the reward. So I'm going to go out, you know, I want lots of reward. I want high return. So I'm just going to go out and buy high levels of risk. Well, it's no, it's not a guarantee. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So all that it's guaranteeing is that you're holding high levels of risk today. You know, you could have two opportunities, a low risk opportunity and a high risk opportunity. Well, either one of these could generate uh, higher levels of return. We just don't know. But what we're saying is that today, in the present moment, you're going to be making a valuation decision. And that decision with a high level of risk, you're going to value that differently than the low level of risk. Now, <laughs> it is also true that on a macro level, we do see this pattern play out across um, asset classes. So in general, for instance, we do see that stocks perform with a greater levels of return than bonds. Stocks are riskier than bonds. So stocks, people price them accordingly, and so they end up generating higher levels of return for investors than bonds do. This is kind of what we would expect because people are making these rational decisions. But again, just as a warning, <laughs> it's not a guarantee. You know, there are years when the bond market performs better than the stock market. It just depends because there's a level of uncertainty there. And that level of uncertainty is precisely why you price it according to the level of risk. So let's walk through an example um, to illustrate this. Let's say you're looking at two different opportunities. And they're both going to take a $100 investment. One opportunity is a 10% investment or 10% risk. 
the other opportunity is a 20% risk. So this 20% risk, you're going to be expecting a higher payoff for. So on the 10% risk for $100, you should be expecting to receive in the future $110. The 20% risk, you should be expecting to receive $120. So here's, here's one of the central ideas of finance. It's not good enough just to make money. You have to make enough money to compensate you for the level of risk that you hold. So for instance, this, this $100 investment at 20% risk, if you made money but you only made $115, that's great that you made money, but you should have made $120 to compensate you for holding that risk. So even though you made money, in reality, you lost money because you should have made $120. So this is one of the central ideas when we're talking about risk and why we care about risk rates so much. Because it's not good enough just to make money. You have to make mo enough money to compensate you for the level of risk that you're holding. And what happens is, you know, there's all these asset classes out there and different asset classes are at different levels of risk. So if you're playing in an investment space that's a low level of risk, it's okay if you make a low level of return. But if you're, if you're investing in an area of a high level of risk, you should be making a high level of return. So for instance, venture capitalists are investing in um, small startup companies. That's a high, an area of high risk. So they should be making a high level of return there. Um, if they make you know, a low level of return, that's great that they made money, but they should have made a high level of, ret of return because they're holding a lot of risk. Um, so, you know, in a practical sense, we're dealing with risk rates. So, let's talk about the rates. You're going to end up with something like this. I have an opportunity with 10% risk your rate is going to be 10%. And what that means is that 10% of the time, you're not going to get your money. So that's a 10% risk. And that's how you get your rate. And usually rates exist on a spectrum between, uh, between 5% and 30%. Now it could be a little bit lower, a little bit higher, but generally you're in that kind of spectrum of 5 to 30%. 30% is high. 5% is low. So the higher the risk, the higher the rate. The lower the risk, the lower the rate. And, you know, if you're getting into dealing with risks that are much more than 30%, it becomes a little bit questionable whether um, you should be making those business decisions because that's a, that's a, high, a pretty high level of risk. I mean, if you're, if there's, um, let's say you're dealing with a, a chance where you have you're, you're, it's a 50-50% chance. Well, then you're, you're just as, you might as well just go to Vegas. So um, we're usually dealing in the range of 5 to 30%. Um, so this all comes back to the present value equation. And I made a couple of videos on present value, um, so I'm not going to go into it in detail. But I'm going to put up the present value equation. And present value shows how we price things. So you're going to have some cash flow that you're going to expect in the future. And what happens is you discount it by the risk rate. And so that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at this risk rate. And for higher levels of risk, this risk rate is going to be greater. For lower levels of risk, it'll be lower. But what that means is for higher levels of risk, you're going to discount your future cash flow for greater amounts, so you're going to be willing to pay less for them today. Um, and you know this is how uh, interest rates work. So let's use the example of credit cards. If you have someone with poor credit, uh, low, uh, high credit risk, they're going to have a high interest rate. And what's happening is the bank is discounting their future expected interest payments for a high level of risk. 
So, you know, they have a high interest rate on their credit card. For people who are low credit risks, they're going to have uh, a lower interest rate. So all these concepts are really related on this, this overall concept of the higher the risk, the higher the return. So to bring it back to the capital asset pricing model, the question here becomes, how do we calculate the risk rate? How do we actually get the number to plug into this equation? Well, that's what the cap M is for. Um, now, in reality, there's, there's lots of different ways that you could go about getting a, a rate for risk and getting that actual number to plug in here. The cap M, though, is kind of a generally accepted approach in finance for calculating these rates and doing it in a consistent manner across your portfolio. So what I'm going to do next is, in the next video, we're going to walk through the capital asset pricing model. So we're going to walk through the equation and talk about each of the variables that are involved.